Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about kitchen countertops. I know when you're designing a kitchen, there are like a million and one decisions to make. So I wanna break down all the different types of countertops and why you should choose one over the other. Let's jump right into it. When designing a kitchen, you clearly have so much to think about. You have the flooring, the cabinets, the appliances, the hardware, the countertops, the accessories, your china, your silver. I mean, there's just one endless decision after another. But the number one question I get asked the most is how do you pick a countertop? We're gonna start with the main questions you have to ask yourself when designing your kitchen. We'll jump right into pros and cons of each type of countertop material, your budget, what your requirements are, and hopefully all of that information will help guide you on how to pick the right countertop for your kitchen. You always wanna decide on function first. Function should always be your top priority when selecting pretty much any material, especially for your kitchen countertops. You first need to make an assessment of how you and your family use your kitchen. For my home, Lahabs and I both cooked. So clearly we needed something that was durable. We needed something that was heat resistant. I pretty much bought and remodeled this house before we started our family. So we weren't even thinking about kids. But if you have, you know, kids that are running around and they're like dropping things off on the kitchen countertops, or you have like a lot of spills that you need to take care of, you need to be able to assess what your key requirements are for that kitchen. Think about the function and its use and then figure it out from there. The second question you have to ask yourself, which might even be the most important question, is what is your budget? I mean, what can you afford? The different types of materials actually range from like low to high end. It's a common myth that marble is the most expensive countertop material that you can get. But I've actually sourced some like really high end exotic granite before that even trumps the most expensive marble there is out there. So while there is a really great variation between the cost per square foot between materials, you need to figure out number one, how much countertop material you actually need. You can break it down by slab and two, whether or not that will fit into your budget. A designer's tip when you're on a restricted budget but love like a really high-end material is to kind of switch it up. Maybe do that beautiful material in the island that doesn't get a lot of use and then you can install the less expensive materials all around the perimeter. Number three is maintenance. How much maintenance can you handle? Every single type of material comes with this long list of demands. For instance, if you are someone who needs a completely sturdy workhorse, it's so durable, you don't wanna maintain it, you don't need to seal it, then maybe a porous material like marble or granite is just not for you. However, if you don't mind regular maintenance like myself, I actually love to tend to my countertops. I constantly wipe them down with a daily cleaner Annually, I'll do like a surface sealer pour on it. So there's a long list of demands that every material requires. So you just have to figure out how much maintenance do you want to commit to that particular material. And lastly, what is your style? I mean, what's your vibe? What's your aesthetic? My personal style is super eclectic. I knew the minute I stepped into the slab yard, I absolutely wanted to go with an exotic granite. I found this really beautiful black slab with all of this like pattern veining in it and I just vibed with that look. So of course aesthetics were really high on my list. So you want to ask yourself what your personal style is. If your style is a little bit more farmhouse, maybe butcher block is a way to go. If your style is really clean and modern, quartzite with this very minimal variation in patterns might be the style for you. And of course you can never go wrong with white marble. I know Carrera and Calcutta is high on everyone's wish list and at the same time it matches a variety of styles depending on what you pair it with so to recap you need to ask yourself those four key questions what are you using your countertops for what's your budget how much maintenance are you willing to handle and what is your style so now let's break down some of the most popular countertop materials and talk to you about the key characteristics of each. First, we have our natural stone countertops like marble, granite, limestone, or soapstone. These are natural stone materials that are typically quarried from all over the world. You can get them anywhere from Brazil to China to Italy. You can even find them locally here in the States and Colorado. The great thing about natural stone is that they're natural. You know, some of the veining and the patterns are inherent in the stone, which makes them really beautiful. 
However, for something like soapstone, which is also a natural material, there's less veining in the overall look of the material. So if you like a natural stone, but you don't want too much pattern, soapstone might be the right one for you. Then there's engineered quartz, which is like sile stone or Caesar stone. Engineered stone just means that they need to pour a resin into the quartz compound so that it creates this super durable material. Quartz is probably one of the most typical materials you find in kitchen countertops today. They're really made popular by HGTV and a lot of those home remodeling shows. But of course, you still need to determine whether or not it's right for you. And then we'll go through the pros and cons of each. Next, we have butcher block material, which is pretty much just a really beautiful slab of wood. There's different ways you cut up the wood. There's a face grain and edge grain. So depending on how the wood is cut up and glued back together, that's how you get your butcher block material. Bamboo is actually becoming increasingly popular as well. So it kind of has that look of wood, but clearly it's not wood. It's a little bit more sustainable. You also have your metal or stainless steel countertops. I mean, I love the look of that in like an industrial kitchen or a really modern kitchen. You'll also see a lot of kitchens now are trending towards concrete, which I absolutely Absolutely love. It's not like concrete of the 80s guys. I mean you can't just like put a pan right down and the whole thing cracks. Today's concrete is pre-cast and they come in a variety of colors so it's really beautiful. You get a lot of variation and at the same time it's a really modern has a super cool vibe. Then there's solid surface countertops like Corian which are poured but since it's not heat resistant and it's completely engineered I absolutely don't even recommend it for a kitchen. You'll also see laminate countertops or a tile countertop which to me are like absolute no-nos. So we won't even discuss the pros and cons. Do away with tile. I mean, who won grout marks in their kitchen when there's dirt and oil flying everywhere? So now let's jump into the pros and cons of my favorite materials so you can decide which one is right for you. Let's jump right into marble. Marble is my absolute favorite material to use. I mean, I probably use it like 90% of all of my projects. I absolutely love marble because it always looks high end. It's a natural material. Each piece is unique. It comes in a variety of patterns and colors and veinings. So I never really can go wrong with choosing marble because it's just so unique. Not only is marble heat resistant, it actually develops a patina over time. So with use and with age and with wear, you actually get like this really beautiful patina that comes out of it. If you guys don't know what a patina is, a patina is really just the look of a surface as it ages and wears. Just think about copper. Once you start using copper for a while, you'll see the different areas where copper starts turning green or it has like this bluish tint to it, that is what a patina is. Marble also works with so many different aesthetics. I put marble in like a European farmhouse type of home. I put it in like a really modern home before. It depends on the surface finishing of marble. Marble could be polished or honed depending on your aesthetic. One of the cons of marble is that it could be expensive. I've actually sourced a slab that costs more than like a small car. So if you're restricted by budget, absolutely rethink whether or not you want to use marble. Another con is that since it is a porous material, which means the surface has pores in it, it requires ongoing maintenance. You can have it professionally sealed, probably annually. And what I usually tell clients is if you have marble installed in other rooms of the house, like a bathroom, you could have your professional sealer come and kind of seal everything at once so that you don't have to think about it. In between use, I mean, it is susceptible to staining as well. Red wine and acidic liquids are not marble's friend. I mean, you have to really just wipe it up right away. And if you feel as though you can't do that, then marble probably isn't the countertop material for you. It also has very low abrasion, which means it could scratch easily. For me, I just love the inherent look of it. So I find the aesthetics more valuable than whether or not I see a little bit of scratch. If you polish the surface, you'll see more scratches, but if the surface is honed, you'll actually see less scratches. Another con that was also a pro is that it develops the patina over time. Depending on how you look at it, it's a pro or a con. Some people love that their kitchen shows exactly how they use it, and other people don't like that so much. So you need to determine whether or not that patina works for you. Moving on to granite. Granite is probably one of the most durable materials out there. That is an absolute pro. But since it is a porous material, it does need to be sealed. A lot of people love 
the heat resistance and the scratch resistance of granite, which means you can take a pot right off the stove, throw it right on your countertop, and it won't damage the granite. I love that about my granite, but honestly, it's not a big deal if you need to lay something out for your surface anyways. Since granite is one of the most durable materials out there, it won't scratch or chip easily, but it doesn't mean that it's indestructible. I mean, if you took like a hammer to it or you like accidentally rubbed like a huge pot on the side of it or a cast iron skillet, I mean, you are going to damage it, guys. But since it's one of the toughest materials out there, that's why people usually pick granite. Another pro to granite is its beautiful veining and patterns, which I mean, honestly, at the same time, you can actually see that as a con. So depending on what your style and aesthetic is, you might love the veining or you don't. Some of the most exotic granites are like super high end and visually just make a statement in any type of kitchen. In the kitchen, just imagine you have like a lot of straight lines. It's just a lot of cabinets and a lot of drawers and all of a sudden it's broken up by this beautiful pattern in the center of your kitchen. That's why I always gravitate towards natural stone for countertops. I mean, it just gives off a very luxurious vibe and no two slabs are the same. In any type of kitchen, you're absolutely gonna see seams. Depending on the material and your fabricator, you're either gonna see them less or more. But with granite, since there's so much pattern variation, sometimes you can hide the seams a little bit better versus like a quartz. Granite countertops are actually considered one of the lower maintenance countertops. They don't need professional sealing like marble. You can really just go out to Home Depot and buy like a topical sealer and then just kind of wipe that down periodically. Granite is also a genuinely natural material. So if you're worried about sustainability, I mean granite is as natural as they come. Another pro for granite is that they are absolutely resistant to chemicals. If you accidentally pour like an acid, like a vinegar or base right onto your countertops, you can just wipe it right up without it harming the natural pore surface. Let's move on to soapstone. What is soapstone? Soapstone is also a natural material. It's a metamorphic rock that got its name from its soapy texture. That soapy smooth texture is thanks to the presence of talc in the stone. There are two varieties of soapstone, architectural and artistic. The artistic soapstone is the ones where you see them carving statues out of, you can kind of like chip and carve into it, but the architectural ones are the ones that are used for countertops in your kitchen. The architectural grade soapstone has a lower talc content, usually about 50 to 75%, which makes it super durable for kitchen countertops. Although it's not as durable or hard as granite or marble, people love it because you can literally install it in any design, shape, or form. One of the biggest pros of soapstone is that it doesn't stain. It's a dense and non-porous material, which means it's heat resistant, it's super durable, and it can stand up to acidic materials as well. Because soapstone is also non-porous, I mean, the maintenance on it is super low. It doesn't need to be sealed. So sometimes when you nick it or crack it or chip it, that becomes inherent in its beauty. To me, that's what makes soapstone really unique. It almost looks like a grayish marble. Sometimes you can get it in like a dark blue or even like a tinted green, but typically it's like this really beautiful gray. That could also be a con with soapstone. There's not a whole lot of variety in colors. So if you're looking for something outside of that color range, soapstone isn't for you. Another con is that you can't find like huge old slabs. Usually they quarry them in about seven foot slabs. So if you know that you have a linear countertop width that is more than seven feet, you're going to have seams. So soapstone like marble does develop a patina over time. So definitely consider that when making your decision. Let's get into the pros and cons of engineered quartz. Quartz countertops are just as strong as granite, but with that added resonant, it makes it a little bit more flexible. Quartz is non-porous, which means it never, ever, ever requires sealing. These types of slabs offer a virtually maintenance-free kitchen workstation, which is why homeowners love it. While they're super durable, they're not indestructible either. However, they are stain resistant, so if you drop a glass of red wine on it, you can easily clean it right up. But the other thing about quartz is that since there's resin mixed in, if you have a part of your kitchen that receives like a whole lot of sunlight and a portion of your kitchen that doesn't, that part that receives that sunlight can discolor over time. There's a lot of new quartz material out there that is made to look like marble. So if you're restricted by budget, you love the look of marble, you can actually choose a quartz that looks like it, but of course it's less maintenance and a lot more durable. Moving on to butcher block. I love how the look of wood just warms up an entire kitchen. The natural coloring of wood just really vibes with modern farmhouse styles. I love that it's like a really soft material, so anytime you put like a dish or a glass on it, you don't get this like big loud banging in your kitchen. If maintained properly, it's a really long lasting and durable choice. 
I actually really love wood mixed with marble. So if you do like marble on the outer perimeter, you can have wood as your center island and it's just a really beautiful mix. Another pro to wood countertops is that it's really repairable. If you get like a scratch or a nick in it, all you have to do is just sand it down and it's good as new. One of the biggest cons with butcher block and wood is that it's not heat resistant. You can't put a hot pan down without a trivet or a towel underneath or else it's gonna burn your wood. Wood can also swell or crack in extreme heat or dry climate, whereas excessive wetness could also rot the wood. And again, like some of the other natural stones, it does develop a patina over time. So of course you can see that as a pro or a con depending on what your style is. Lastly, let's talk about the pros and cons of concrete countertops. Concrete countertops are like so trendy right now. I literally cannot open Pinterest without seeing a concrete countertop on like a super chic kitchen. Typically you think of concrete for really industrial spaces, but I actually love how the inherent look of concrete can make a space look so modern and so chic at the same time. One of the pros of concrete countertops is that it could be formed and shaped and molded and poured into any type of configuration for your kitchen. So if you have like an angular kitchen or like a curved kitchen, you really can't specify concrete to the design of your kitchen. There are so many options when it comes to colors and staining. Concrete isn't only that cold hard gray that you typically think of. You can add stains and color to it so it can match pretty much anything that you dream of. Concrete is rock hard solid. I mean, it's completely heat resistant. It's stain resistant. It doesn't scratch. It's super durable and long lasting. You can pretty much pour anything into concrete to make the look uniquely you. I mean, if you wanted like glass fragments or shells or rocks or stones, you can pour it right in there and it'll be cast alongside with your countertop. I mean, which I think is pretty cool. I've never done that myself, but I've seen it done and I think it's just like a really Really beautiful unique way to make a personal statement. The surface is really easy to clean providing that you regularly seal it. Concrete nowadays is considered like a super premium high-end material so it actually adds value to your property. One of the biggest cons for concrete is that it is expensive. I mean, it usually starts like around $150 a square foot. I've actually specified marble for that cost, but if you're like constantly thinking of concrete, if you're constantly pinning images of, you know, kitchen countertops that use concrete, it is definitely a valuable investment. Another thing about concrete is that it is heavy. I mean, sometimes it can't withstand like really cheapy cabinets and drawers underneath it. Make sure you have high quality materials as a foundation for the concrete countertops to sit on. The biggest con about concrete is that the repairs are gnarly. Even though they're super hard material, if you accidentally crack it or chip it, I mean, you have to replace the entire thing, which a lot of people don't like, but at the same time, if you can afford it, hey, why not? So the bottom line is, Treat your countertop like a huge investment. Besides your bedroom, a kitchen is the most used room in your home. You wanna make sure that you make quality investments. You really consider all of the questions when determining which countertop material is right for you. Of course, style and aesthetics plays such a huge role in whether or not that countertop will vibe with your space. I hope this video has helped you whittle down your selections. I know there's so much to consider when specifying your countertop materials. For me personally, I buy the best that I can afford. Anytime it comes to selecting materials for my home, I think of two things. Number one, what can I not live without? And number two, what can I afford that I won't regret later? If you keep these principles in mind when selecting any types of materials for your home, you really can't go wrong. Cause to me, you really thought it out. The more thought you put into it, the less regret you'll have later. I know that there is so much information in this video guys, and it's one of those content heavy posts. So if you like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions when trying to figure out which countertops are best for your kitchen. And of course, subscribe to my design channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.